Hey guys, it's Jim. Hope you're doing well today. One of the things I like to do in Luminor is experiment and come up with new things to do, new ideas, and it's because Luminor is just incredibly capable. It's a great program. I use it on literally every image, and I love it. And so one of the things I've been experimenting with is color shifts. Uh, there's a lot of different tools in Luminar, all these 40-plus filters that are built in, and there's a good five or six of them that you can use individually or together in some cases to create some interesting color shifts uh, in your photos. So what I mean by that is taking the tones and colors that exist in the image and then basically making them completely different. Uh, it's a great way to create sort of vintage looks or sort of alternate versions of reality or whatever you want to call it, but it's a fun uh, artistic sort of thing to do. I do it quite a bit in terms of experimenting. I, I don't always share these uh, photos, but I have a lot of fun creating it. So I thought I'd talk about some of those tools and how you can use them. And it's all in the filter menu and, and that's all on the right hand side here. So the first one I'm going to talk about is curves. And that's because it's uh, monstrously powerful. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to fix a couple of basic things in this photo first. So let me go down here to, uh, nope, not top and bottom lighting. I'm a little fast on the uh, filter selection. I'm going to go to tone. I'm going to actually add a little bit of contrast to the scene. And I'm going to take the highlights and the whites down a little bit. I want to bring back some of the detail in that sky. Uh, it was a little bit blown out for my taste, so I'm gonna try something like that. So let me show you the before and after. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. So that's my starting point. Now, I'm gonna add a new layer, not because I need to, but because I wanna just keep things completely uh, separate visibly. I'm gonna create a new layer, and on this layer, I'm gonna start with the first tool that I like to use for color shifts and that's curves. So one of the things I like to do here again is just experiment. So I might raise the shadows a little bit, it gives it a little bit more of a foggy feeling, maybe uh, you know, compress the highlights a little bit. And then it's really just some, you know, some sort of gentle S curves on the different RGB channels. And as I mess with these, you can kind of see what's happening to the photo. And by the way, if you're not real familiar with curves, I've got a couple of videos and I can, uh, share those in uh, in links in the comments but take a look at those if you're not familiar with the curves tool but it's really powerful and and the blue as well uh, i actually might go the opposite way with the blue and if you look at this i mean let me show you the before and after there's the before and that's pretty realistic maybe a little bit saturated on the green there's the after and again you know you don't have to use all of these you can use some of them or none of them but curves is one that i think is super powerful and super fun to use so I'm going to kill that. That's one example. Uh, the next one is cross-processing. And the best way to show this is just to drag the slider pretty far to the right. So there's um, a few of these that look good on, uh, on this particular image. I've gone through this already. I think Tokyo is one of them, and that's the first one that shows up. I also think Monterey looks pretty good. It's kind of a washed out, somewhat vintage sort of feel. And then I think Miami looks Pretty cool too. Again, very different. If you just turn off the layer, you can see the original, or maybe if you want the before and after, there's the before and there's the after. Now, in any of these, you can stack other filters, of course. So you might come in here and say, hey, it's a little too green, Jim. So maybe you want to go in and take the saturation of that green down a little bit, and maybe some of the aqua to wipe out some of those tones. And uh, you can see there's the before. And there's the after. That sort of uh, reduced some of the intensity of that uh, color that came from the cross-processing uh, Miami filter. So that's another idea. And let me erase those. We're back to our starting point. Another one is bicolor toning. This is a really interesting filter. It basically lets you set the top, as you can see here, the top color and bottom color, or you can turn them off uh, or on if you want to. You drag the amount. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag. Now you can see it's already set. It defaults to this particular toning preset. So I'm just going to drag it pretty far to the right just so you can see how it, how it looks. And it really doesn't look that bad even though it's, as you can see here, it's, you've basically, uh, this preset includes sort of a purplish top and sort of an orangey golden bottom. Now if you want to change those colors, you just click on that. It pops up with a color wheel and you can just drag it around to do kind of anything you want, right? So uh, it doesn't matter as you drag it around this wheel that the colors adjust accordingly. I actually think that looks kind of cool. It's kind of weird, but kind of fun. Uh, and I might do something similar with the bottom uh, as well. That gives it maybe a little too much, maybe something like that. 
And so that's by color toning. You can also set the orientation and that essentially shows you where the division is. And then of course you can move the bar to increase or decrease the size of the zone that's sort of the um, you know the line between where it's the top color and the bottom color. You can also just turn off the top and bottom color if you want to. So that looks kind of cool actually. So let me hey, set orientation. And there you go, there's something very different. Let me show you the before. And there's the after. The bottom obviously stayed the same because I didn't change it. The top is significantly different. Or if you like the bottom, turn it back on. Again, just something different, kind of fun, kind of interesting. I think color shifts are fun. And by the way, uh, this is not an adjustment I would normally do by itself. Um, as you know, on layer zero, I did uh, some tone shifts in the tone menu with smart tone highlights, um, whites, and contrast. Usually things are needed like that on an image. You might also add clarity or something like that as another filter just to experiment with. So uh, that's by color toning. I'm going to try color balance next. Uh, I love col color balance. I use it on a lot of photos. Um, I think it's particularly good for sunset and uh, you know nighttime kind of photos where we can really shift the tones to make it a bit more moody and dramatic. I often use just sort of the mid-tones and I'll do something similar here just to see what I come up with. And I'm kind of riffing. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of sliding things. Um, that actually looks kind of cool. Let me see the before and after. Rather different. It looks like it's a lot later in the day. So I basically took something that was shot. Uh, this was 3 or 4 in the afternoon. So kind of late in the afternoon. It was still pretty bright out. Uh, and by the way, this is the Molten Barn in Jackson Hole, Wyoming which I uh, saw on this big road trip that I'm on. And it's just a gorgeous spot. It's a famous, famous barn. And it's been, uh, you know, photographed for years. And this isn't like a unique or original idea in terms of taking this photo, but I had to go see it. Um, but, uh, you know, mid-tones, you can mess with highlights. If you want to warm up the highlights, right, you can sort of do something like that to give it more of a sunset glow. So color balance, again, you can do the same thing with the shadows. Um, you know, you just click on that menu there, but there's a number of things you can do. I've just messed with a little bit with the highlights and midtones. Tons of opportunity to, to be creative here, and that's color balance. So that's another idea for sort of creative color shifts. Um, split toning is another one. I love split toning. I'm going to get down here. I've been using it for years. Uh, way before I had uh, Luminar or Aurora, I was using it in Lightroom, and I love it. So basically, you can just drag the amount of saturation that you want to the right, and you choose the hue separately for the highlights or the shadows. So it splits it. That's why they call it split toning. You can choose one color uh, tone and saturation level for the highlights and a separate one for the shadows. And if you want, uh, let's see here, you can just, uh, no, you can't. You can just drag this um, to pick the, uh, the highlight sort of uh, hue, if you will. And again, you know, all kinds of opportunities to be creative here. And you can do something different with shadows. So something like that. And you create here sort of a vintage sort of film look. And I think split tone is actually really good for creating vintage type looks. It's kind of green, but again, if uh, you can change that with the, uh, with the menus here. But if you want, you can add something like HSL and come in and maybe change the hue of the green. Make it a little bit more yellow. And then maybe take the saturation of the yellow and the green up. And I'm making this up as I go, so I don't know how this is going to look. Uh, but there you go. Let me show you the before and after. I pretty much altered the greens and made them a bit more yellow. And that's a great way to take a summery uh, green image and turn it into a fall-looking sort of orange uh, or, or red type image. So you might bump up some of the oranges and reds too here to bring out some of that stuff in the barn. Again, a million things you can do, but that's a split toning coupled with HSL. Uh, there's also split color warmth, which is fun. Now the difference here is that split toning separates highlights from shadows and allows you to adjust the tones independently. This one separates warm colors from cool colors and allows you to make them warmer or cooler. So if you want warm colors to be cooler, you go to the left and they get cooler. If you want them warmer, you know, warmers to the right, coolers to the left. So the cool colors, if you want them warmer, like the sky, there you go. There's an interesting color shift. Let me show you that. There's the before and there's the after. If you want everything to be cooler, you can just kind of go to the left and make everything cooler. Uh, maybe you just want to kind of go opposite and want the warm colors to be cooler and the cool colors to be warmer. You split it like that. And look at that, interesting and different color shift. 
Again, you can stick other filters on top of this. Curves might be helpful here, maybe something in the uh, HSL filter, things like that. So that's another idea. And one more, the photo filter. I like this one a lot. It's pretty interesting. And whoa, Jim, that's a lot, right? Well, the saturation defaults to 100, so you can just take that down to something maybe in the middle, and then you can just drag the photo filter to get the intensity level, right? Uh, you choose your hue here, and um, what I would like in a future version, uh, which I don't see here, is a color grade here on the hue. However, here's a trick. Just go open split toning, and there's your color grade, right? So the hue slider in photo filters follows basically the same thing as you'll see here in hue on split toning. So if I start here, I'm a lot more red, right? And if I start dragging it, you'll see here I'm getting more to the yellows, and then I'll get more to the greens, and kind of into the blues, and then back around to the pinks and the reds that, uh, that occur at the end of this slider there. So if you're not sure how to use photo filter, just open the split toning menu, look at the hue slider. It's the same whether your highlights or shadows, and I'm not using this filter, right? It's turned off, um, and there you can see there's no difference in the photo. But um, I'm just looking at the slider here in hue to give me an idea kind of what's happening. But that's how you can do it. So there's a lot of things you can do here. I kind of like that. And hey, look at that. There's kind of a cool, almost not quite sepia, but kind of vintage look and feel. Um, preserving luminosity, um, just click yes or no. Usually when I click no, the colors are more intense. When I click yes, they're less intense and more faded. So uh, just experiment, but photo filter is another one. But that's a, a quick list. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different filters in Luminar that allow you to do creative color shifts to your photos. It's a lot of fun. It's interesting. It's an artistic way to express yourself. And again, don't hesitate to stack other filters with them. HSL goes really well with all of these. Curves goes well really with anything. Um, I like color balance a lot, so you could use that in combination with some of these. Just experiment and have fun. Hope it helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time, my friends, and adios.